What's going on guys? If you've been following some of my content over the last couple weeks, you know that I'm trying to sprinkle in some of these top five lists that seem to be a pretty popular around this time of year. I'm gonna be doing some ones that are reflective over 2018. I'm gonna be trying to do some that are predictive over 2019. And this video is gonna kind of go into the bucket of predictive. So I'm gonna be covering my top five um, retail predictions uh, for 2019. And regardless of whatever category of consumer packaged goods or fast moving consumer goods that you sell into, uh, retail is obviously a very massive part of your professional life. And this past 12 months has arguably been kind of the most dynamically disruptive um, time that I can remember. And because there's been so many things moving, I, I honestly think 2019 is just going to be much, even a bigger leap than 2018 was. So I'm going to try to go out on a limb, predict a few things here, and hopefully give you guys some value or, or some entertainment. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. Let me give you guys my top five retail predictions for 2019. First one we're going to cover is Facebook and Facebook getting into the retail game. And I don't necessarily know which kind of iron that, uh, Facebook has been kind of heating up in the fire is going to ultimately going to be rolled out kind of extensively in 2019, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Facebook is going to get into uh, becoming a retailer. So you guys know like Facebook as a core product, they've been really focusing on their marketplace, putting members and members together um, in a, you know, kind of a Craigslist style uh, approach to it. And there's been a lot of success from, you know, users selling things on there and other users feeling comfortable buying from Facebook just because of an extra layer of comfort with kind of being able to view people's profiles. But that's obviously one of them. The other one, Instagram shopping, they've been really focusing on, you know, shoppable links and, and getting people to, you know, direct to consumer websites or other kind of listings. And I think they expand that one. And then one of the areas we, we forget about Facebook is that they have obviously their Facebook messenger, but they also have WhatsApp and those also have, I think, you know, close to 2 billion users on them. Um, similar to the user count that's on um, that's on Facebook. I think Instagram has about 1 billion, but this is a massive amount of consumers worldwide. And if you look at kind of conversational commerce or, you know, chat based um, commerce, you see like in Asia, that's really big. And I think, you know, it's inevitable that this is going to become a very big piece of, uh, you know, commerce in the U S. So I think with, Facebook, you know, obviously they have three irons in the, in the fire right now. They're trying to figure out which step is going to be the best to kind of go forward with. If we kind of pull this back and why I believe this is kind of um, going to happen is that, you know, Facebook as a core of their products, they quite honestly know more about us than, you know, we probably know about ourselves through just the massive amount of information we've given Facebook over the years. Um, also just the connectivity of all the, the shared data that they have access to, uh, Facebook honestly just knows more about us than we know about ourselves. And that could be utilized or leveraged in a very effective way for shopping. If we look at an ecosystem base, you know, Amazon has, I think 140 or 50 million prime members right now. Facebook with their ecosystem is in the billions. So they obviously have a much bigger ecosystem to pull from with them kind of utilizing multiple different ideas right now with, you know, maybe ads, uh, shoppable ads and video, um, the marketplace, you have Instagram shopping, you have the conversational commerce aspect on a, a WhatsApp or a, a Facebook messenger. All those could be obviously leveraged in whatever way they would like to. And I think that sellers right now are kind of in this phase with Amazon where they're kind of wondering what's Amazon doing with their private label. Amazon sellers are looking to, you know, arbitrage retail wherever they can. And if they can, you know, find a different area to make money at, is that Facebook, is that Walmart, which I think is going to, you know, kind of bolster their uh, seller platform in 2019 as well. But there's going to be a lot of movement that's going to happen with Facebook's products. And I think that they're going to 
they're gonna take one big leap in one of those areas. I'm not sure exactly which one. If I had to probably guess, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be Instagram. So second one is going to be that be an acquisition uh, prediction. I think that Amazon will buy uh, will buy Kohl's this year. Um, I think Kohl's is a good target for Amazon because they're already kind of doing some tests with them with kind of their return policies and just kind of seeing traffic volume. I'm sure there's some aspects of uh, data sharing that Amazon put in play with that. Um, and then also Kohl's has been kind of active in doing some different partnerships, I think with Aldi's. They're trying to figure out, you know, are people willing to come in and kind of buy some groceries in their department store and what is Kohl's in the next, you know, in the next decade, what does that retail experience look like? So Kohl's kind of seems very open to testing some different things. And because they've already kind of started that testing process, I think Amazon finds that extremely attractive. The Aldi's one specifically seems, you know, attractive because Amazon is going to be looking for click and collect points or small market points to either do an Amazon Go or a small uh, cashier list type of uh, um, Whole Foods or, or something like that to kind of further their grocery, um, grocery aspirations. And then kind of secondly, I think that uh, Amazon also buys on a fire sale some of the Sears and Kmart locations that kind of go on the market. Uh, there's just a lot of retail square footage right there. They can turn that into small warehouses that are closer to urban areas that they can kind of get closer to two hour shipping points to combat against a Walmart. So I think both of those things are going to happen. Um, I think Amazon ultimately goes out and buys somebody in 2019. Kohl's just seems like a pretty good, um, pretty good option for them, but they could obviously go in a different direction and buy somebody else. I think it's just natural that Amazon is going to go out and buy somebody else to get some, uh, to get some extra retail locations to combat against uh, Walmart because of, of just how important click and collect to become for uh, grocery retail and retail in general. And good transition into my number three is that Walmart or Sam's Club is going to look a lot more like warehouses in 2019. So Walmart has been very aggressive towards click and collect. Um, and if you guys are not too aware of what click and collect means, it's essentially um, taking, it's a, an omni-channel approach where essentially uh, the, the buyer, the consumer goes online, uh, purchases through a digital kind of component, um, like a marketplace, um, picks, ultimately picks to buy online, uh, pay online, but, but pick up in store just to cut down on maybe shipping costs or cut down on time element. If it's gonna be in two day shipping or it's gonna be one day shipping, they can come and probably pick it up in two hours or one hour. Um, so it cuts down on a lot of those elements and millennials in general are over indexing on the click and collect. So they're kind of driving that trend as millennials are kind of aging into uh, the point where they're having families and having kind of busier lifestyles still. Um, they're looking for convenience factors and they're kind of putting this click and collect as one of their important elements of this new kind of retailing world. So Walmart, because they've kind of already went in this direction, they're gonna be looking a lot more like warehouses. Their stores are already, you know, obviously very big, um, high ceilinged, big box looking squares that could be warehouses at one point, ultimately like just full scaled out uh, warehouses. But I think they're gonna be taking a good portion of that real estate uh, square footage. They're gonna be moving that into more of, um, more of a space that uh, leverages the click and collect, also leverages kind of the final mile, um, you know, kind of on-demand shipping. Uh, right now, they're kind of utilizing mostly Postmates. I think a couple other uh, people, uh, they might be using Instacart as well. But I think Walmart also goes all in on either buying one of those um, on-demand. I don't think they buy Instacart. I think that's too big at this point. But maybe they buy um, somebody like Grubhub and kind of turn it into all retailing. Um, they might also buy Postmates. I think those are, are very big acquisitions for them to make, but I think they have to make them quick before um, those businesses get too big, like an in Instacart. But I think Walmart, you know, sets up their stores for this new world of retailing. So if it's if people are going to come in and do click and collect, they're going to make sure that they're 
you know, their outside the store is set up correctly, their inside the store is correctly set up for speed. Um, the inside of the store is going to be correctly um, optimized for a lot more pickers, um, you know, be it third party or, or Walmart type of employees to make sure that people can pick and, and shop, do personal shopping for the people that are um, wanting to do the click and collect or the on demand delivery. And I think as well, Walmart wants to set these stores into kind of micro shipping points so they're able to ship things at a much quicker pace if somebody's even looking for just traditional pure play um, type of shipping. So I think that Walmart is going to make an aggressive move towards that and kind of shift their um, idea of where they think retailing is going to be over the next five to seven years. And this is, they've seen a lot of really good data. They've seen that they're, you know, I think at this point, pretty much leading uh, the grocery world with kind of their e-commerce click and collect efforts. So I think it's just natural for Walmart to kind of go all in on this. And we're gonna see Walmarts look a lot different in 2019. Jumping back to Amazon, I think Amazon naturally goes, goes kind of full force into physical retail. So I already talked about, you know, a possible acquisition for Amazon, but I think Amazon with all of their other store concepts, and I've talked about them on this channel, but you know, you have, you know, Amazon four star, which they're using some of their kind of social capital and review and feedback loops to create a curated store. You have um, their bookstores that are doing fairly well. You have obviously the um, Whole Foods, you know, them extending the Whole Foods kind of 365 stores, uh, but their big one is obviously this Amazon Go, the small convenience play that is gonna be in urban areas that are gonna be cashierless. And Amazon, though I think right now they have maybe 10, uh, less than a dozen of those concepts right now. I think you see those grow like crazy. I see um, the Amazon Go concept kind of really taking fire in different metro areas. And Amazon understands that they needed to move backwards to move forward on this kind of digital, um, this digital channel. Consumers around the United States are not ready for a pure play, 100% digital experience with especially grocery. And Amazon knows that after many years of trying to get Amazon fresh off the ground, um, and after they bought Whole Foods, they understood there's an element of retailing that they can reinvent. They haven't done it fully with Whole Foods yet, but I think you're gonna see that get more aggressive in 2019. But Amazon is, is going to really use this Amazon Go concept to really springboard them into what they believe is going to be the new world of retailing. I think going into the last part of 2019, I think Amazon actually starts to white label this um, technology that they built for Amazon Go, similar in a way that they do with Amazon Web Services. I think Amazon realizes the power of this technology. They realize that, you know, they are going to win because of their ecosystem and just kind of the the pillars of Amazon uh, being so effective. They're not necessarily worried about having their internally built technology be white labeled out and somebody jumping them. I think with Amazon Web Services, they've seen that that was built for Amazon because they needed something to run um, all their applications and everything. And in a similar way, Amazon built this Amazon Go because they knew they needed um, to push retailing more towards the future. And now you see that there's some you know different kind of competitors that are kind of coming out with some of this, um, some of this technology and Amazon's best position to sell that to other competitors because it also gives them access to some of the data and gives them access to some of the players. And in the long run, to me, that technology is worth more to sell it out than it is to keep it in-house because eventually it's that's not going to be the differentiator. The differentiator in Amazon is going to be the Amazon ecosystem and what they can provide to consumers' lives. That's going to be for the next decade or two. So I don't think Amazon needs to hold on and keep that technology in-house. They can ship that out to um, other retailers and, and kind of move that forward and use that as another revenue stream. And the last retail prediction that I have is that I believe there's going to be a lot of what I consider the last new pillar of, of kind of business and retailing. And it's always been a binary decision with businesses. Either you build or you buy. 
But in today's world, I think there's this third um, area that has been extremely important, especially in, in retail. I think it's going to be more important. And this is the idea of partnering. You saw, you know, even in the last couple months, you saw a very big kind of partnership with Kroger and uh, Walgreens going together where Kroger is going to sell some of the private label. They're going to kind of set up little small markets within Walgreens. And that's kind of right in line with being like a defensive strategic move against these Amazon Go um, store concepts. And you're going to see retailers, big retailers, um, try to figure out, you know, where the future of retail is, like, where do they fit into this and how do they leverage their kind of scale and their knowing retail at such an intimate level, how do they take that and use it for the future? And, you know, you saw different partnerships, you've seen a lot of the store within the stores. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that in 2019. So they're going to use these kind of partnering opportunities to learn without kind of going all in on something. They're going to utilize pop-up shops. They're going to utilize some of these store within the store type concept. You're going to see some like digital influencers, you know, kind of move into sell their products directly into these uh, retailers in a kind of a unique way. Though they'd like to probably keep their whole buying experience online, they realize there's a, there's a benefit to having retail be the way they, they want it. And they're gonna figure out a way to partner with some of these massive um, FDMC, these food drug mass convenience club uh, type of channels in 2019. Because ultimately everybody's trying to figure out, especially on the retailer side, they're gonna be taking a lot more chances to figure out like where is this new world of retailing. And a lot of them are willing to take chances on, you know, digital peer play, um, influencer type of uh, relationships, some unique strategic uh, partnerships in categories of consumer packaged goods and fast moving consumer goods that they don't necessarily um, sell a lot in, or they're just kind of, um, you know, kind of doing the minimum things for. You're gonna see this expansion of these partnerships. And I think in the 2019, you're gonna see several massive ones that happen. I don't know which ones those are going to be, but I predict that there's definitely going to be at least two to three of these massive food drug mass convenience uh, players that either partner up together or there's going to be some very massive consumer brands that partner together to create um, some unique partnerships. I'm going to end this video there. Um, hopefully you guys got some enjoyment out of me trying to predict the future here with retailing. Um, hopefully I gave you guys some unique insights or some different uh, opinions on where I think re retailing is going to go. Um, if you guys have some uh, predictions of your own that you think maybe I didn't cover, make sure you guys do comment below. I would love to hear those and engage with you on those. But if you guys have gotten through this video this long, I would really appreciate you guys hitting that thumbs up right below. It helps YouTube understand that you enjoyed this content and they'll spread this content out to more uh, people that aren't subscribed to me. And if you are not subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, um, but I would appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button. That little vanity metric puts a smile on my face. But I just want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me on this topic. Hopefully you guys got some value in return for that time that you gave me, but I'll see you guys on the next one.